This is the Crappie Connection brought to you by Redneck Rubber, Power Crappie, Visit Ridgeland, BM Poles, K9 Fishing, Cornfield Fishing Gear, Bobby Garland Baits, Jenko Fishing. Denali Rods, The Direction TV, Top Hat Jigs, Crappie Magnet, Anderson Minnow Farm. What's up, guys? Brad Chapel back with you. Got my buddy at the end there. Todd Huckabee. We're here at the Mid-South Show in Grove, Oklahoma. Yeah, I'm Vance Montgomery. I'm with uh, Van Mar Taxidermy. What uh, we're going to emphasize today is after we catch our trophy fish, Vance, what do we need to do with it? I mean, I, I hear guys all the time, I, I've got a fish mounted and it didn't turn out the right way. And uh, what is the steps after you catch a fish? What does somebody really need to do to take care of that? You know, it's kind of the taxidermy has kind of changed in fish taxidermy over the last four or five years, especially. Yeah. You know, the, the, the old school was to, you know, keep the fish, mm-hmm. you know, and bring it to your taxidermist frozen. And then, you know, we mounted it the best we could. And, you know, the, the, I, I was so torn on, you know, do I stay with the skin mounts? That, that had all the shrinkage and cracks and they just don't last that well? Or do I go to this next level and, and start creating the, the new way or the new era of taxidermy that's coming to be with the technology that there is now in replicas? Um, it's There's really no real good reason to keep a fish to have it mounted at this point. Um, you know, and the, really the first step of doing... Um, the angler's part in the boat or in the field is is taking you know really good measurements you know total length from the from the the head to the the total length of the tail um, a good girth measurement you know in the widest point right above his spiny dorsal mm-hmm. uh, with that fin up yeah with the fin up is mm-hmm. is fine either way you know just right there in front that's normally kind of the widest part of a fish's girth and uh then once you've done that and and i and try to do this in a quick way you know you don't want to yeah. keep the fish out of the, out of the water so long that it didn't do any good to turn him back so you know try to do this in a quick manner you know you've taken length girth then then this is my deal you know i, I always take tell guys to take pictures and you know when i first started telling them that they were taking pictures like you would take for your buddy mm-hmm. you know and 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 you know from five six foot away and that's cool I, it doesn't hurt to do that at all but in order for me to do the detail that i'm that like you see in these fish in order for me to do a, a crappie replica and make it look like the fish you caught i need you to take pictures of it from this far i know uh Todd, before this show, we were kind of discussing this beforehand. Uh, tell us about this mount. I know Todd knows some of the history on it here. So th- this mount is really, really cool to me, especially because one of these two, one of these three fish was caught in my boat. Mm-hmm. Um, young kid by the name of Cooper. And the other two, I believe both of them came out of Worcester with Robert Robinson. But... This dad found this amazing piece of driftwood that he brought Vance, and he wanted to, you know, remember these fish that his kids caught, and Vance yeah. did a great job. And there again, that's, I'm not blowing smoke for you, but that's what's cool about these three fish is they all do look different. 
Yeah. Because they were all caught at different times of the year in different bodies of water. And so, you know, there again, it comes down to the photos. and Exactly. I, I, he, he wore me out just on that one fish. I can imagine how many times he wore Robert out on the other two. But he was like, send me every picture you have of that fish. Yeah. The pictures that you took of him with it on the boat. And, of course, we kept ours. But uh, the pictures that I had when we were getting ready to clean it and took another picture, different stuff. And, you know, take, yeah. take very, very, very close-up pictures. Like he was saying, some of the times when he's come crappie fishing with me, I'll catch a fish and he'll be gone for like 10 minutes in the back. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, taking pictures. I'm like, Mm -hmm. you know, like how many pictures do you need of it? Oh, it's, I mean, to really, you know, to, you know, one thing I I, I think crappie is probably one of the hardest things to to replicate in in fish taxidermy. There's so many different colorations and, and, you know, Todd being a good friend of mine and, you know, I, I was always sending these pictures to him like okay what do you think and he'd say nope uh, nope nope and i mean i'm this been going on for five years and so every time i go fishing with him or or i'm fishing on my own and for crappie and you know i'm taking pictures of the eye Mm -hmm. of the mandible of every fin you know of the face the gullet the you know and and that's the kind of pictures that i'm looking for i'm not looking maybe a couple pictures out four or five foot away but I'm looking for pictures that are taken of the of the cheek of the fish, of the gills, of the of each fin, you know, from three or four inches away, and that's how I can reproduce what that fish, all the way down to his markings. You know, I'm looking for that distinct pattern. Every fish has a distinct pattern. Yeah. No two are exactly the same, and and in order for me to replicate that, I've got to have good close-ups for whether it's me doing it or anybody else that's something really really important is you know i can even if you don't have the ability say you catch a fish and you're not really prepared you don't have a good measuring board or you don't have a good cloth tape and that's something that's important is put a little cloth tape in your in your boat that way you can take that girth measurement because you've got to have something soft you know it can't be a uh, a hard tape measure you just you're not going to get a good measurement but if you don't have that i can i can i've see so many fish that i can get real close i can get real close even from a good picture but one thing i can't do if you don't take good pictures of it it's hard for me to reproduce the fish you had i can make it look good yeah but it's not going to be the fish you caught and that's the kind of thing with crappie that i know i know todd will agree you can look at a fish sometimes and say, well, I know this particular fish by the coloration of them come from a particular body of water. Mm-hmm. I know everybody thinks gray and it's, you know, a, a muddy lake and those white fish just come out white. And you can usually look at them out and say, well, I bet that one comes from Grenada. And that's how you really want in my mind um, a mount to come back and say, you know, I can identify that fish by that coloration to a particular lake. Mm-hmm. Um, on replicas, how big can you get? I, I know some guys now are catching some four pounders. Is that possible? Yeah, it it, it is. Uh, there's 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 a few four pound moles of crappie, uh, and we're working on that. I mean, actually, Jeff Jeff is bringing me what two? Well, so Jerry Hancock said he's bringing you three, and Jeff Larch is bringing him two mm-hmm. that are all in between three and four pounds to build molds yeah so we're actually creating new molds as we speak and and there's several other guys out there in 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 the taxidermy world that are very very good at molding and casting and and we're all kind of working together to create there's so many guys now you know catching that three to four pounder yeah that you know i've done taxidermy a long time until live scope come to be i'd probably only done a handful of three pound crappie I've probably got 20 to do right now, Mm -hmm. you know, in one year. And it's just, it's changed the whole, it's changed the whole game. So we're really, really working hard for a few of these fish that are, you know, that are dying, even though they're maybe trying to turn them back, but you're not going to save every one of them. Right. You know, some of these, some of these fish are old and and when they're stressed from being caught they end up dying and so i'm encouraging especially the guides that are around that you know if you got one like that keep it that way we can you know 
take that fish and make, make a make a permanent mold casting of it and then we can replicate it over and over again what some of the options a guy can have when it comes to mounting fish what are some of the prettier mounts in your mind um i know say logs and different things you know i think every uh different fish have different things about them that make it cool taxidermy you know a, a, a crappie you know like this piece here that 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 is the prettiest piece of driftwood i've probably ever seen you know it's very unique and 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 that's just a once in a lifetime piece um you know driftwood looks good uh you know we do a lot of our mounts on cedar driftwood with the kind of the root system in them and a lot of guys do that as well um, you know, if you're doing bass, there's a lot of different things you can do from artificial, you know, we have the ability now to do artificial rocks. Now, I can make a rock that, that it hangs on your wall that weighs a pound that looks like it weighs 50, mm-hmm. you know, and they look good. They look very weir- uh, real. So it, it's just really up to the guy, you know, if you can imagine it. Now, honestly, we've got the ability to recreate it anymore. I know a lot of guys are probably thinking this right now, but and I know things change, and no prices for anything goes up, seems like, nowadays. But what's the general price line that you're looking to spend when you're, you're wanting to mount a fish? So, you know, I'm, I'm probably one of the maybe more expensive guys around. There's probably some guys cheaper than me. But on a mount like these, so a, a, a wall mount is going to be, the way we do it in our shop, uh, it's, it's a, a wall mount is, is done – on crappie is 590 that that's total cost now these fish were done both sides museum quality both sides so if i do a wall mount i'm doing museum quality only on the show side and that's for about 600 bucks if 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 you're going to do both sides then it it runs about a thousand bucks to have a fish done on both sides museum quality and and when i talk about museum quality i'm talking about coming in and airbrushing a fish just like most people would but then i'm actually coming back with an artist brush and i'm spending about six to eight ten hours actually hand painting each scale one at a time wow probably not just one time probably on a crappie each scale has probably four different colors that i'm actually applying with an artist brush after all the airbrushing's done so that you know there's a lot to it to really make these fish look like this and um you know on you know price range on, on a lot of fish i do by the inch i charge 30 dollars an inch on a lot of fish but crappie <clears throat> crappie takes so much time to really put this much detail in them that that i have to you know i i just i i, I charge a set price okay because so I didn't know if a, a three pounder would cost you just as much as a four pounder. It it really does. Yeah. You know, there's not a lot of difference in my time, as far as it being a three to four pounder, or even a. I mean, honestly, a two, a, a two pounder is probably harder to do, because his scales are smaller, than a four pounder. That makes sense. Yeah. So for all the guys out there listening, I know a lot of them, bird hunt and deer hunt and everything else. Tell us some tricks for guys when they kill a unusual duck or goose that they want done. so one of the things on waterfowl that that guys i get asked this all the time you know what what's the best way to take care of your bird once you've got a bird and you know and, and really the first thing to do is to look at it in the field proper field care on waterfowl is very important uh, you want to you want to look at your bird first you know lay him down on his back pull his primaries apart make sure he's not just shot up you know and and that he looks good and clean you know he's not got a bunch of a pellet holes through the primaries or secondary feathers and once you've decided yeah this is a good bird it's a good specimen he's good and mature he's got good markings um <clears throat> you can use pantyhose in the field this works real well just go head first down in a pair of pantyhose and that way then you can put him in a game bag or and, you know in a tote bag and and you can get him home but so we used to ha- tell guys that it was not a big deal to leave them in the pantyhose and put them in the freezer and we were wrong uh, that's something that we've now decided that's not a good thing it was leaving some a little bit of pattern markings from the pantyhose being so tight that 
when you put them in the freezer long term, it, it was causing a problem. So what I suggest, once you get them home, cut them out of the pantyhose, then this is very important. Take uh, a paper towel, take three paper towels, and <clears throat> wet the paper towel, wrap each foot and leg in a, in a wet paper towel, and then wrap his head and, and bill in a wet paper towel. Those are the three spots on a bird that freezer burn real easy. And uh, if you'll wrap those in that wet paper towel, it'll really kind of help insulate the bird from, from being in the freezer. Then once you've got that, put him in a, either a big Ziploc or a small trash bag, roll him up real tight, then put him in a second one. If you'll do that, I mean, you can literally keep um, a duck in the freezer a couple of years with him being good. If you don't do that, you know, if you just put him in a, in a Walmart trash bag and throw him in the freezer, in, a, in 30 days, he will not be very good. That make a difference? Yes. That what about much. pitchers? Like, does it help any on waterfowl necessarily for pitchers? Or? Yeah, I mean, it, pitchers are okay. So in regards to pitchers on waterfowl, this is what I encourage guys to do now. You know, there's so many photographs of taxidermy and, or, or live birds is even probably better. You know, so once a guy calls me about doing waterfowl, you know, I'll tell him, get on Google, and Google, say if he's got a mallard, Google mallard taxidermy or Google mallard flying <clears throat> and find a pose that you like and, and, and take a picture of that, save it. And that, that way, when you come in, you've kind of got an idea of what you're after. Because yeah. I, can, I can create pretty much any pose. But that way, 10 months from now, when I go to mount your bird, I've got something to go back and look at that you sent me in text that will really help me reproduce what you're after. What's the craziest way you ever mount a, a mallard or? <laughs> so I, you know, I've done I've done some birds inverted upside down. Uh, I've also did a, a mount for a guy one time that I actually did three geese. I did a blue goose, speckle belly, and a snow goose, all dead, in the air, dead. So he had actually had me mount them like they were being shot. That's pretty cool. There. So so they were just really you know yeah. kind of out of the ordinary, but that was kind of cool. Um, you know, that's, uh, you know, we did a project for, a for an outfitter out of Kansas this past year. It was a really a special deal that we got to do. <clears throat> we did, we did 37 mallards, pintails, widgeon. I think that was pretty much it that, that were all suspended from the ceiling in their hunting lodge, all coming into one place just like they would in the wild. And we suspended them all from, from a braided fishing line, two pound braided fishing line. So when you're looking at them in the sky or in, in, their, yeah. in their place, you literally looks like they're, they're flying. Huh. Yeah. I need to do a fish like that. That would be pretty cool, wouldn't mm -hmm. it? <laughs> so, you know, one of the, the things that kind of uh, put Van Mar on the map is about four years, I guess, ago, I did a piece of taxidermy that I'd kind of been wanting to do for a long time. Uh, I did a bass in a, I guess I call it a coffee table. It's really not a coffee table, but it's, it's uh, the, the surface was made to look like water. And I did a bass jumping through the water, chasing a big bullfrog with some, some other underwater fish with it as well. And, and I, I, I still remember this like it was yesterday. <clears throat> I, I remember posting on Facebook get this picture and when we got it all completed and I remember my son calling me and saying dad you got to quit sharing that I said well I just posted it one time you know yeah and uh he said uh, let me call you back there's something weird going on so he calls me back in about 10 minutes he said hmm I think this this picture is going viral when an hour it was almost at six million views and by the next morning, it had 9 million views and over 100,000 shares. So, and it literally changed our company overnight. I bet. Yeah, it really did. Yeah, how, how many comments did it have on it, like, within the first? Uh, I don't even remember, Todd. It was crazy. I mean, I was getting comments on country, on language I couldn't even read. I, we had to get a translator just to see what it was. <laughs> I mean, I was getting stuff from China to Germany to Russia to all over the world. Just in one night. We need to make a, a cropping mount that would go viral like that. Yeah, that would be awesome. 
you know oh, could you mount one and just a, a wild idea say like is being filleted sure it could be done that'd be pretty neat yeah that would be pretty neat yeah that could be done maybe next thing go viral here you know, <laughs> never know yeah that would actually be a very interesting yeah you, so, you talk about something that would get people's attention at a trade show to yeah. have a mounted fish that's flipped yeah. over with a knife sitting there on like a little cleaning board so it could be it could i've got be, his eyes i can tell that yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that wheel is spinning oh, right oh, now I, there's no doubt i mean i could cast the inside of a fish and and i could make it look like the meat that's, i've never seen that mount before no i haven't either that's a that's a pretty cool idea <laughs> what about big game i mean all right i just shot this big 160 inch buck what so, i need to do you know you know far as big game far as, you know like at least for doing shoulder mounts like probably most guys would do uh you know field care again is really important in order for for any tax service to do a good job you've got to do your part right and the biggest thing i see in animals that guys do wrong is you know there's so much of the shoulder now that's in in the mount itself versus maybe what was 10 years ago a, a lot of guys cut their, their capes off too short and especially in the brisket area around the front leg area it, it's <clears throat> really really important so this is what i tell guys so go halfway back on the body cut him cut a ring around his whole body then this is the part that most guys mess up is around the front legs so go down on the front leg down on his knee ring around his knee and this is the very important part from that point you want to go up the back side there's a real transition of hair color on a especially on a white tail yeah that goes from brown to kind of a white hair that's underneath their leg underneath their shoulder it cut right up that which is up the back side of that leg not on the inside but the back side that's very important literally if you make the mistake and cut it up the front side your capes it's off, gone it's automatically no good no good sometimes if you cut it up the inside i can fix it but if you'll go up the back side you'll always have plenty of cape and you'll never i can do any mount from a full sneak to a wall pedestal to anything you might want to do and and that that is the biggest mistake and that's the main thing that you want to make sure that happens is getting leaving plenty of cape i mean you can leave the whole thing on there and let the taxidermist cut it off when that way I can cut it where I want. You rather have too much than not enough. No, you can't put it back. <laughs> yeah. You can't right. put it back. It just don't work very well, you know. So, uh, you know, as far as life-size taxidermy, you know, the thing that on life-size is, you know, don't do anything other than mm -hmm. get it frozen. You know, if you got a bobcat or something like that, just, you know, get him checked in. You know, on, on all cats now have to be checked in with a, with a game ranger. Uh, they have to have a tag put through their their face and then once you've got that accomplished it needs to go in a trash bag rolled up and frozen bring it to me like that don't go to cutting on it or anything like that what if like do they need to be dry when you freeze them you know i i, I see some guys they'll get blood on on a, yeah. on an animal and and they want to wash it that's not the good thing don't and when you when you get things wet it causes bacteria to form quicker and uh it, it, you know and then it's when it, when you bring it in then i've got to try to get it back dry so let us do the cleaning don't worry about the blood i can get any blood out of anything that's not a problem don't wash a hide don't don't rinse it off don't do anything just put it up just the way it is well man i, I definitely learned a few things today myself yeah, yeah. Uh, we definitely uh, enjoy being at your show and plan on doing some more things and guys if, if you got any kind of questions this would be the man i would contact right here and we'll put up his facebook page and his business page and man if you want a beautiful crappie mount i think i'd give a old vance here a, a shout you for know sure. i i really enjoy doing taxidermy you know i've done it for a while I've been fortunate to to win some pretty good awards i won uh in 2019 i won best professional fish taxidermist in Oklahoma and, and Texas. And uh, 
than many years ago. I won first place in the in the world taxonomy competition and fish taxonomy as well. Wow. So I kind of do these trade shows and all to make a living, and I kind of do taxonomy because I really have a passion for it. I'm really it's, – it's, it's – You can tell. I, I don't get up – I get up every day – getting to do what i really enjoy that's the american dream yep that's right that's all i got guys comment tell us some uh shoot some pictures of some good taxidermy that you got uh comment share and like our page got anything todd no we're good till next time brad chapel here todd Ackby. vance montgomery holla And a fishing pole Forever here I'll rest my soul I can feel my worries drift away